Well, it's some beautiful weather to do a review on. Uh, <laughs> this week I've been driving the 2021 Chevy Tahoe, something that I'm super excited about. So without further ado, let's take a look around the exterior and then we'll jump in the car and start talking more about the vehicle. But it's wet, rainy, and cold out here today. So uh, we're gonna spend as little time outside the vehicle as possible. Whew. All right, and taking a look at the exterior here, we're gonna start off with the front. You do get that new front grille, new headlights, a little bit of a controversial design, which Chevy has been doing in the past couple of uh, Silverados that they've had, but I think this is a good compromise between them wanting to have this uh, angular design and making it still look good. Those headlights are the IntelliBeam headlights, which means they have an auto on off feature something that I don't particularly like, but this does have it. You do get LED daytime running lamps and those headlamps are LED as well. Moving along the side, you get 20 inch polished aluminum wheels with all season black wall tires. Along the bottom below the doors, you get that black assist step. It's a little bit shallow for my feet and this thing isn't tall enough to warrant it for me, but it's something that I'm sure my kids and wife enjoy. The side mirrors are body color with chrome mirror caps. They are heated mirrors. The driver's side has an auto dimming feature. They are foldable, but they don't fold on lock, something that I wish that they did do. You do get body color door handles with a chrome strip. We have the bright roof mounted side rails. Coming along the rear of the vehicle, you have the LED tail lamps and dual outlet exhaust. And that exhaust does look really nice on this vehicle. Now quickly to touch on overall dimensions, the wheelbase on the Tahoe is 120.9 inches. The overall length is 210.7 inches. The height is 75.9 inches. The full width is 81.0 inches. And his ground clearance is 8.0 inches. And the gross weight of the vehicle, the GVWR is 75 hundred pounds. So SUVs are a big deal for Americans, a big deal for American manufacturers, and a big deal for GM. And for Chevy, they sell a ton of different CUVs and SUVs. Let's really quickly touch on all of those, and then we'll talk about the trim levels offered here in this Tahoe. So at the entry level, you have the all-new Trailblazer, and then you have the Trax, and then the Equinox, and then the Blazer, then the Traverse, which is their first three-row SUV, and then the all-new Tahoe, also a three-row SUV, which we're sitting in now, and the all-new Suburban, which if you don't know, the Suburban is basically just the bigger version of the Tahoe, or the Tahoe is a shrunk down version of the Suburban. So just like Ford has the uh, Expedition and Expedition Max, the Suburban is basically the Max version of this Tahoe. You basically just get more room in your cargo volume. But we're in the Tahoe now and it comes in six different trims. You have the LS, the LT, the RST, the Z71, which looks really cool. The Premier, which is what we're in here. And the High Country is the top of the line. And not too long ago, we drove the High Country Silverado and I was super impressed. Really like the interior, really like the design, especially that front end with that uh, High Country grille, which you can get in this when you get the High Country. But we're in the Premier and it's basically the second level tier trim and it's still really nice. So let's go over the interior here. We'll touch on the tech, then we'll take it for a drive. And then we'll stop again and check out the hatch and cargo volume. We'll talk a little bit about the engine here and the different engine options the Tahoe has. Then we'll break down some of the pricing and competition in the segment, and that will wrap the video up. So let's get into it. All right, and starting off with the interior, this interior trim is called Maple Sugar. It's a tan color. I actually really like it. I think it looks really good. It's offset with a lot of black trim and you get a little bit of wood grain, which is nicely done. It's not uh, very flashy. It's very minimum, not very shiny. It's the kind of wood trim that I would prefer in vehicles. 
if you're going to get wood trim at all. Now, this is a three row vehicle and is a really great vehicle for larger families. And we did take this on a bit of a road trip with the entire family and it handled really well. Kids never complained about space in the rear seats. They're very comfortable even for a longer road trip. And of course, up here in the front seats, very comfortable. Both the driver and passenger are 12 way power adjustable seats both of them heated and cooled seats. And the driver's seat has two memory positions. Again, a really great option for families. And back there in the rear seats, you do get USB charging ports, which is really great. They are only USB type C ports. So you do have to have a USB type C cord, which I do own, but we didn't bring because I didn't realize that uh, going into our trip. So you do have charging capabilities in the back, but you do have to have that correct cord, which is very nice future proofing for Chevy. But I feel like if anybody's not gonna have that, it's gonna be the rear passengers. But you do get one on either side of the very back row. You do get two USB charging ports here for the middle row. Now you do get USB type C up here in the front, but you also do get a USB type A. So the normal USB charging port is up here. Here in the middle seats, you also did get a regular house plug type charger. So you can plug in one of your bricks and uh, charge stuff that way. And that's basically what we did driving this thing on our trip. And in the console, you also do get another USB type C and USB type A port. So lots of charging options throughout the vehicle. But my favorite is the wireless charger down here, especially matched up with the wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So you can basically set up your phone to wirelessly play through the infotainment system and have it wirelessly charging, which again, I think is fantastic and looking forward to the day that every vehicle has this option. And if you're gonna be playing your music through this or playing uh, music from the radio or whatever, you do have a 12 speaker Bose premium surround sound system, which sounds really good. But let me walk you through a little bit more of the tech and stuff here in the interior, and then we'll get to driving. So first of all, basically the party piece of the interior here is the 10.2 inch multicolor reconfigurable infotainment screen. This is where you do have your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We can see that right here by hitting the Apple CarPlay button. And again, my phone is not connected to anything. It is wirelessly playing to this. But Chevy's infotainment system is a decent system. It doesn't look absolutely the best, but it's responsive and gets the job done. Moving down from that, you do have some of the radio controls and your AC and heat controls, your controls for your heated and cooled seats on either side, and your USB charging ports and your wireless charging pad. You also get two cup holders here up front, a nice little holder here for your phone, which is not a wireless charging pad, but a nice rubbery place to set it. And then in the console, again, you get those extra USB charging ports and a big massive console for storing whatever you need, like uh, extra masks for the family. Moving along to the steering wheel here, it is a leather wrap steering wheel, comfortable in the hands, and you get a lot of controls here on the steering wheel from your cruise control and safety controls to radio and info, to your infotainment controls and information display controls. You also get controls back here on the back of the steering wheel on either side, which will control your infotainment system. And then behind that steering wheel, you do have your driver information display. And this is a 4.2 inch display with a lot of different information on here, which is super helpful. Another super handy display is that heads up display. And that heads up display is a 15 inch heads up display. And you can project things like turn by turn directions, safety alerts, incoming calls, and a lot more. Basically my biggest gripe with the Expedition is that it did not have a heads up display at all because I really do enjoy them. And my only slight gripe with this heads up display is that with such a massive area, I would love to be able to configure this heads up display and show exactly what I want and where I want it to kind of reconfigure. One of the things that I'd really like to see on it is your fuel level or your miles to empty, things like that it would be really great for longer road trips, but it is a super nice display. We also do have a 360 view around the car 
with nine camera views, which is great for parking. And if you do take this thing off-road at all, great for maneuvering off-road. But mainly when you're in urban settings and you need to park this thing in tighter spots, that 360 camera is essential in this big vehicle. Another cool feature here is your rear view mirror. You can keep it as a rear view mirror, which you can see is super dark right now, or you can have it displaying your rear camera, which is nice if you've got the vehicle packed full of goodies or people, and it's harder to see out the back. You can always just turn it on to the camera. It's a weird experience at first, when people are right up on your bumper, you can very much tell. It might be a little distracting for some, especially if you're not used to it, but it is a cool thing to have. All right, with that, let's go ahead and put it into gear and get on the road. Talk a little bit about the driving of this vehicle and different features that you get driving. Let's go. One of the really nice features you get with the Tahoe and a lot of GM vehicles is the magnetic ride control. And this monitors each wheel independently during your drive, adjusting vertical suspension every millisecond to maintain a smooth ride. And this is a super smooth driving vehicle. Now we do have the four wheel drive version, which gives us some nice four wheel drive features, including a hill descent control and hill start assist. And again, I didn't really use these features in this vehicle, but I have used them before in different vehicles and when you need them, they are really nice to have. Fuel economy wise here for the all wheel drive version, you are looking at 15 miles per gallon city and 19 miles per gallon highway. If you get the two wheel drive version, you can bump those numbers up by one. And again, that's along with the engine that we have under the hood, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But our average for the entire week has been 15 miles to the gallon, which is pretty decent for a big vehicle like this. We did do a lot of sitting idle and of course, harping on it a lot and a lot more of city driving than highway driving, even though we did do our longer road trip. But 15 miles per gallon is not something that I'm complaining about. So you do get a lot of safety features here in the Tahoe, some standard, some as an added extra. We basically have everything that you can get here, which is great. But for your standard safety features, you get automatic emergency braking, forward collision alert, front pedestrian braking, a follow distance indicator, and those Atelabeam headlights, which we already talked about. As an added extra, you get adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist with lane departure warning, rear cross traffic alert, lane change alert with blind zone alert, the HD surround vision, which is the 360 camera, and a safety alert seat, which that safety alert seat is a vibrating seat, which will let you know when you get out of lanes or when the radars detect something. And I really do like it. Whenever I first drove a GM vehicle with that vibrating seat, I didn't quite like it that much. But the more and more I drive it, I really do like the vibrating seat to warn you, especially a lot more than having an audible sound that everybody in the vehicle can hear. That slight little uh, nudge to the driver is much nicer. All right, guys, we've got a little bit of a break in this rain. Still sprinkling on me a little bit, but I want to show you the hatch here. Now, as long as you do have the key in your pocket, you should be able to kick underneath and give it a pop. You can also pop it from the key fob itself, or you can pop it with a button down here. And this does have a massive amount of space. Let's touch on that really quickly. So behind that third row, you do get 25.5 cubic feet of cargo volume. You can fold that third row down and then you get 72.6 cubic feet and you can fold the second row down and get 122.9 cubic feet of cargo volume. Now again, this is a massive vehicle and those are really great numbers. And it's actually a really usable cargo area, which not all three row SUVs have. Even the bigger three row SUVs, a lot of them do skimp on cargo volume. Even if it does have a decent number, a lot of that is the vertical space and not uh, the actual usable space. This does have very usable cargo volume. Now, if you are taking a trip and you're going to have this thing packed full of kids, that Suburban is going to be a lot better to be packed full of stuff and people. Another cool feature back here are your automatic dropping rear seats. So you can fold these down with a touch of a button and back up. 
and then the second row seats you can drop with a touch of a button here again nice features to have and then you do get your own power outlet back here as well which is really cool all right let's close this up and get back inside all right now that we've talked about that cargo volume I'm sure you're really wanting this vehicle by now, but you want to know what's under the hood. So let's get to that really quickly, and then we'll talk about the price and competition. So you do have three engine options for the Tahoe, which is really great to have those different options. And two of those options are V8 engines, which again is really great. And that's something that you definitely don't get with the competition, namely the Expedition. But your options here are a 5.3 liter Ecotec 3 V8 engine. This pushes 355 horsepower, 383 foot-pounds of torque, and is matched up to a 10-speed automatic transmission. And that's the setup that we have here in this one. You can also get a 6.2-liter Ecotec 3 V8 engine. This one pushes 420 horsepower, 460 foot-pounds of torque, and is matched up to that same 10-speed automatic transmission. And finally, you can get a 3-liter turbo diesel engine, which I haven't driven, but sounds really cool in this vehicle. That pushes 277 horsepower, 460 foot-pounds of torque, and is matched up to that 10-speed auto transmission. And if you're going to be towing in this thing, that's probably the engine to get. So the Tahoe isn't just good at hauling people and stuff. It's good at hauling basically anything. You do have 14,000 to 14,500 pounds of towing with the max trailering package. And as far as I saw on Chevy's website, that is consistent across the engine packages, although that diesel is going to be a better towing engine. All right, so I made you wait long enough. Let's finally touch on the price and competition here, and we'll wrap the video up. So your base MSRP for the base Tahoe is 55095 Now that's not going to get you a lot of the tech in here a lot of the safety features in here but for a lot of families that's going to be a good compromise for the room that you get in here because the size doesn't shrink with the price tag we're in the premier and the premier has a base price of sixty five thousand six hundred our vehicle here fully specced out is seventy thousand oh eighty five and that's a big ask for larger families to finance so it's super hard recommending something like this to larger families unless you just have the money to spend but if you do it is a great vehicle i've been really impressed with it throughout the week your really only competition for something this size is the expedition obviously there are other three row suvs big three row suvs by other manufacturers but nothing that they sell really compared to the tahoe the suburban the Expedition or the Expedition Max. So recently we've driven three different Expeditions and have three different videos out on those. The Baseline Expedition has a base MSRP of 52810 which is just under the Tahoe. But the latest one that we drove was the non-Max King Ranch and was really closely comparable to this one here. And that had a base MSRP of just over $72,000. And our full MSRP for what we actually drove was over $81,000. And that was only a two-wheel drive and not the four-wheel drive, which this one is. So in those regards, I would say this is probably slightly a better value, but still $70,000 for a family vehicle vehicle is a large ask. But again, I've not always been a huge fan of Chevy and Chevy products, especially some of their recent designs, but I really do like this new Tahoe. There's a lot that they did right here. There's a few things that I would probably change, but I think on the whole, I'm really impressed with this thing and I really do like it. But let's jump back out really quickly and wrap this video up. All right, guys, well, the rain definitely isn't over, but this is a good time to jump out and wrap the video up for you guys. I hope you did enjoy the video. It sucks about the weather, but you got to deal with what you got to deal with. If you did enjoy the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the new Tahoe. And if you want to see more, especially that Suburban, we definitely like to see that or the GMC Yukon. Definitely excited to see that as well. But with that, guys, again, I hope you enjoyed. And as always, thanks for watching.